Hey, what's going on guys? It's Nano back again with another video. Thanks for stopping by. And today what we're going to be doing is reviewing the Fitbit Versa 3. Now I've made a, an unboxing video on this before. I've actually already posted a video on the Garmin Venue SQ. What we're going to be doing is focusing on an average consumer perspective of this device right here. Um, so what I mean by average consumer, I'm talking about someone who cares about steps, someone who cares about sleep, someone who cares about basic notifications. I'm not someone out here that's actually using this every day, tracking GPS on it. I probably should. I need to lose some weight, but that's not me. Uh, honestly, I'm not even using it as a Spotify device. Um, but what I am using it for is to sleep with it every day, to see my steps every day, to check my heart rate every day. Those are things that I'm doing on this all the time. And this handles that beautifully. Absolutely no problems whatsoever. Matter of fact, um, the experience of the UI on this device compared to previous uh, Fitbits is night and day. Um, I know that only this device and the Fitbit Sense are going to give you the ability to do and use this kind of UI interface, this kind of software experience. Um, so if you're thinking about getting the Versa 3 or the Fitbit Sense, you are going to enjoy a much better you know, software experience. So let's talk about things I like, we'll talk about things I don't like, and then my final review on this device. First and foremost, uh, tons of things I like. Uh, the design language of this device is fantastic. It looks good, it's clean, it fits really nice on the wrist, it doesn't look or feel bulky, uh, doesn't weigh a lot. I've had compliments on this before. It doesn't look like a geeky smartwatch. It doesn't look like a bad, you know, wannabe fitness tracker. Um, absolutely love the design language on this. Battery life. Uh, Fitbit claims about six days worth of battery life with fast charging or quick charging. Absolutely agree with that. Uh, fast charging on this is incredible. Matter of fact, I believe right now this is at a 53%. It was dead and I started charging before making this review. Um, it was literally dead and I'd say I gave it about 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes and I got to 53%. Um, standby time on this is great. What I mean by that is like if you're sleeping, if you're not really doing anything, just kind of checking notifications on this, uh, battery life's even better. Really enjoy that. Um, the screen is incredible. The blacks are black. It's vibrant. Everything punches out. I'm really enjoying how the colors are on the screen. Um, and then let's talk about the UI. Uh, everything just flows so smoothly. I just did a review on the Garmin uh, Venue SQ. Coming from that to this or using those interchangeably over the last few weeks, I've noticed a night and day difference. I mean, Garmin's lags, uh, it stutters. This is almost reminiscent of an Apple Watch experience, almost a Samsung Galaxy Watch experience. I know that Fitbit purchased Pebble Watch, so they do have some good uh, software engineers on their team. Um, but just being able to fluidly move through icons and pages, uh, being able to, you know, check your stats for the day, everything just, just works well. And I think when you're talking about a fitness tracker that's smart or smartwatch as a whole, if your software isn't good, uh, I think that really takes away from the experience because if it tracks well, but the software is poor, you're not going to feel as inclined to check your stats. You're not going to feel as inclined to go out of your way and see how you're doing for the day. You're not as inclined to check your notifications because it's just not a good experience. You, at that point, find yourself resorting to your smartphone. And then that's the case, then you might as well not have a smart fitness tracker or smartwatch period because if you keep going to your smartphone then it defeats the purpose right so kudos uh to fitbit for really providing a very nice experience um software wise uh tracking wise i think it's fairly accurate again i'm not that kind of person there's other reviewers out there dc rainmaker and so forth that really give some wonderful in-depth reviews on the tracking aspect of these um so far the times i've used a gps it takes about a minute for gps to lock on sometimes less sometimes more all depends on where you're actually located that seems pretty standard um, based on what I've done, I don't really notice a difference. But then again, I'm not sitting here using that on a daily basis. So I really don't care or need that kind of functionality. But so far, so good. Um, I love using the alarm setting on this because the subtle notification of waking up during your like uh, peak wake up time period is what they call it or whatever is a really nice experience. Uh, I, I feel like it's pretty accurate. It tends to wake me up when I'm most ready to be woken up. I mean, obviously Fitbit has all this data. It's tracking my heart rate, so I would hope that's the case. 
Um, notification on this is actually really good too. There's some things about this that are not out yet. Uh, the, the ability to dictate notifications back, um, you know, like you can use Alexa or eventually using Google Assistant is not present yet. Um, but that is a feature that will be coming. And when it comes, I think that's going to be a very popular feature. And I think lots of people are going to be enjoying that. I know I will. Uh, things I don't care about it so much. Um, sometimes when trying to link up to things inside the app. So for example, uh, using uh, the wallet or using the coach when I have tried to use those features there is some lag now I don't know if it's the lag because of the UI because I have talked a lot of praise about the UI or if it's so much that the application itself is just more RAM heavy um, but it it lags a bit it sometimes it doesn't sync or flow as quickly as like an Apple watch when you're doing Apple pay or Samsung watch when you're doing Samsung pay um, but those are so minuscule that I, I honestly, it doesn't deter from my experience whatsoever. Uh, and I don't really use it that, that much. Um, but overall, this has been a pleasant, pleasant experience using the smartwatch. I've loved it a lot. I love the screen. I love the feel. I, I actually enjoy the band itself. Uh, pretty standard, quick uh, release here at the bottom. Um, tracking is really nice. Battery life is fantastic. Overall, design language is nice. And I, I highly recommend it for 200 and I think it's right around 29 US dollars. I think this is a steal. Um, I, I, I think people that are in the market for something like this will obviously like this. If you need more tracking, then you bump up to the Fitbit Sense. If you need more smartwatch functionality, uh, depending on the phone you have, if you have an Apple, then an Apple Watch obviously is going to give you a lot more smartwatch functionality. Um, but this is fitness first and foremost with smart tracking and smart functionality after the fact. Notifications, phone calls, things like that. That's not the number one priority of a device like this. It's heart rate, it's steps, it's sleep tracking, it's everything fitness first, smartwatch functionality second. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, guys, if you have any questions or anything that you want me to kind of look into as time goes by. Um, stay tuned for some more reviews here shortly as well. And uh, like always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Please consider hitting the subscribe button. It means so much to me. No cost to you. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Like always, it was Nando. Peace, salute, and adios. And don't forget to stay geeky. I'll catch you guys in the next one.